says, you painfully realize we are in the middle of a worldwide infertility epidemic and you are suffering from that epidemic. Uh, it's age related. In women who are in their early 20s, less than 1% are infertile. But by the time you reach your late 20s, approximately 16% in, in any population all over the country, all over the world, are infertile. That means they can't get pregnant without some kind of medical help. Now, by the time you reach your mid-30s, 25% of all couples are infertile. And by their 40s, the vast majority of couples are infertile by the age of 40. So there is an age-related decline in fertility, which is causing this epidemic, because most people in the modern era want to get their education, they want to achieve emotional stability and maturity in their relationship, find the right partner, uh, get their career established, and, and people aren't getting to that point until at the earliest their late 20s and uh, often until their late 30s. And that means since you're about 20 times less fertile in your late 20s and your early 30s than you were when you were just a teenager, uh, infertility is just rearing its ugly head. And it seems to be a mystery to a lot of people, but the reason for it is fairly clear. And, of course, the solution isn't to hurry up and have children when you're not ready to have children because our society is very complicated today. And there are those who fortunately have figured everything out by their early 20s, but most people, most likely, are going to be waiting till their late 20s or their 30s before they feel really ready to have their family. So there are some young couples that are infertile, it's true particularly if the man has a very low sperm count, uh, then it's not even related to the wife's age. He was just uh, saddled with a low sperm count. There are other infertility problems that are not age-related, and we often are dealing with younger couples with those problems. But the vast majority of infertile patients, their problem is simply due to the fact that human beings originally were designed to start having children when they're 15 and to die of old age when they were 30. And menopause was unheard of and any any couple that made it to past 30 were considered uh, um, uh, people with great longevity, so to speak. But our society is complex now and people are just beginning to start trying to have children at the time that biologically, in our, the past of our human society, uh, people were finished trying to have children and were done with their child rearing. There are, there are two common types of infertility. It's divided into male factor and female factor. I mean, to what extent is this the husband's problem? To what extent is it the wife's problem? This is the big question that's always asked. Most of the time, it, it's really a combination between the two. Now, okay, there are occasional cases where the husband has no sperm at all in the ejaculate, and it's clearly a husband's problem. Even then, 5% of the time, the wife has a concomitant infertility problem. There are cases where the wife's tubes are totally blocked or where she has completely run out of eggs very early in her life, and then it is obviously uh, a female problem. But... The majority of the infertile couples we see, it's a combination of problems in both the husband and the wife, and both have to be paid attention to. Now, the male problem is almost always genetic, unless the man has had a severe infection causing blockage or unless he's had a vasectomy. So that's usually pretty obvious to every couple, whether they've uh, got that kind of a problem. And that can be treated... Uh, and we'll talk about that at another session. But the commonest reason that couples see us with male factor is the husband's sperm count is low. And men go through all kinds of worthless and expensive and frankly stupid treatments to try to raise their sperm count. But our research uh, at St. Luke's Hospital uh, in collaboration with uh, MIT in Boston and the Whitehead Institute 
and uh, the Genome Sequencing Center and the Human Genome Project uh, has revealed that male infertility at over 95% of the time is genetic. You're born with a problem and it has absolutely no possibility of being helped or improved with any of the common treatments like varicocelectomy or putting men on hormones or giving them nutritional supplements like Proxeed or special kinds of vitamins or wearing a cold athletic supporter. None of these approaches to trying to improve the sperm count work. Uh, you can waste a lot of money and a lot of time, but here's the tragedy. If you waste too much time with these worthless treatments to try to increase the male sperm count, you might be wasting years while the wife is getting older and she's having that age-related decline in fertility that's going to make it harder for you as a couple to get pregnant with proper treatment anyway. Uh, so really 90 percent of the time uh, the infertility is related to a combination of factors in both and the male sperm count being low should not be a distraction for really getting the proper treatment striking while the iron is hot so to speak before uh, the female partner suffers a decline in fertility. Now you may wonder why why is there this age-related decline in fertility in the female partner? It's because although men are constantly making new sperm every day, millions, hundreds of millions of sperm every day, the wife was born with all the eggs she's ever going to have. And when she's a teenager, she has on average 400,000 eggs. And a thousand of them are going to die every month, no matter what whether she's on birth control pills to prevent ovulation or whether she is stimulated with hormones to uh, get more eggs, it doesn't matter. A thousand eggs die every month and so she's got an average of about 400 ovulations in her life. As her egg supply begins to run down, she is going to become less and less fertile because she has less quality eggs, the best eggs are ovulated first, and frankly, even when we do infertility treatment, the highest pregnancy rates per treatment cycle are with the youngest women. And so it's important not to delay treatment that's really effective while you're getting older and your eggs are deteriorating and the prospect for success with treatment gets less and less because you've delayed treatment too much.